Good morning, everyone. I'm Jonathan Finney, and I am kind of the crazy travel guy. Uh, if you've ever uh, met me, talk to me. I probably talk about travel more than I talk wireless. Um, honestly, I'm more interested in travel than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is just a means for it. But I've learned a lot of stuff over the last decade, 20 years traveling, and I wanted to try to help everyone how I can with what I've learned, tricks, things that I've been doing. So let's go through. So who am I? Crazy travel guy. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, if you want to say anything on Slack on the random channel about any questions about anything I'm about to tell you all, um, I contribute to multiple sites on the internet, travel blogs. I'm part of the whole travel sphere. So let's go ahead and get through that. The why. Why am I here? It's a wireless conference. What's the big deal about travel? I did some statistics and I found we, depending if we travel 20%, 50%, 100%, some of us will spend 5 to 25% of our actual labor time that we're doing for work traveling. So why not learn more about it? So, of course, saving time, we want more comfort, we want to save money, and the road sucks sometimes. Let's not kid ourselves. So, going through, I'm just going to try to blast through a lot of information. If you're not using Google Flights, you should. Even if you have a corporate travel system, Amex, Concur, Google Flights will find more. There's more configurability to find anything and everything as, find as, as far as finding, uh, like, a direct flight 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., direct through X airport to multiple airports. Other sites to throw travel math, understand regional airports. TripIt is something you should be using. Seat Guru, if you want to make sure you sit in a decent seat. One comment, beware of Expedia, Orbitz, those kinds of sites. Whenever problems happen, you're going to have problems. And using an OTA will contribute more to that. And you want direct bookings when possible. OK, next part is loyalty. How much care do you need to give the loyalty to begin with? A little bit. If you travel under 20%, stay free agent. There's no reason to go to layovers to try to get a few miles, to try to get the lowest status. It's not going to matter. If you travel over 50%, it, but it does start mattering um, to the point, eh, let's see, yeah, it just, it matters. Anyone who travels as much as myself and uh, others, they know what you could get. And January 1st is the most important date. That's when everything resets. Why loyalty? When things go bad, you get first in service. You're going to get taken care of. When planes cancel, you're more, more than likely going to be the person to get that seat when there's only X amount of seats available. So if you want to get home to your family or get to the job site to make sure things are done, it's going to happen. Of course, upgrades. Upgrades are cool. We all know about that. The other part of loyalty is miles and points secural. The higher the status, the more multipliers you're going to have on cash spent nowadays for airline and hotels. So that's one other, one other piece. And something else, hotel loyalty is okay. I don't necessarily think you should focus on it. 50% or more, okay, but under that, not, not as much. And if you're a consultant doing it on your own budget, kind of an odd to Eddie. Airbnb is not bad. Airbnb is working nowadays for business travel. I've tried it. It works, and if what you spend on travel goes back into your pocket, I'd implore you to look more at Airbnb. And plus, when you're working hotel upgrades, it's like, okay, getting a presidential suite while you're working, it's cool and all the first few times, and after a while, you're like, big deal. Status matching. One cool trick is you get status on one hotel, one airline, they will all match each other. Everyone's fighting for your business. They all want your money. So say if you're a Hilton Diamond, SPG or Bonvoy, the new program will match you or Hyatt will match you. Every year I leverage all of them against each other and you could just send an email. So I hold status in every single hotel program and hold status in a few airlines. So that's kind of a cool trick. Some credit cards provide status and you could leverage it. Some airlines provide hotel status and you could also leverage that. The next part is if you're using your debit card or a plain bank card, you're doing it wrong. Credit cards are everything when it comes to miles and points accumulation. 
Multipliers are the keys, so you get all kinds of added benefits, rental car status, insurance, lounge access, et cetera, et cetera. But the best thing to know about this is multipliers. I figure a lot of you guys probably have Southwest cards. There's nothing wrong with the Southwest card, but what if I told you getting a Chase card, you'll get 2x, 3x the points on it. So if you want more Southwest points, it's actually better to use Chase cards in order to get that. So the quick reason for that is, again, the multipliers, but the biggest difference is on Amex Platinum and Chase, you have membership programs. Instead of having a United card, a Delta card, Southwest, you're able to pull them all into a group. So instead of just you having Southwest, you could take Chase points, put them about 13 different ways at different hotels to different airlines. Um, single best cards, that's debatable. Chase Sapphire preferred Amex Platinum are kind of uh, the two that most travel blogs, the points guys say are the best. Annual fees, take a deeper look at annual fees before you immediately uh, disregard it. I know a lot of people don't like that. You could make up most of the annual fees and then some. How do you get your points and miles? Actual travel, business spend. Some of us, I'm sure, spend upwards of forty to $70,000 on travel if you're doing 80 to 100% a year. Go ahead and make sure you get the most out of that with the business credit cards, the Chase, et cetera, whatever. Um, actual travel, button mile seats, business spend. The art of churning. I'm just going to leave a breadcrumb. There's an entire community dedicated to churning. Basically, you get credit cards, you get the bonus points, repeat and rinse. You could do a lot on that, but way too much to talk about that. Using your points. So, when we get all these points and miles, why do we want to get all these points and miles? What are we chasing? So, what it basically comes down to is whatever you want. You could do, you could just take your family of six, go to Orlando, go to Disney. If that's what you want to do, cool. If you want to go luxury, fly some crazy first class flight, go into Ritz Carlton, you could do it. We all, if we travel enough, I guarantee you, you have enough points to do this. Just learn how to use redemptions. And the quick, uh, quick notes on points and miles um, using them for gift cards or products, bad. And using a membership portal to book your travel is bad. So quick trips, there's a discount code, corporate code for everything. If you're working for a customer, they might have a good code to give you. You use AAA, you'll save thousands in hotels. If you're a veteran, there's really good deals for hotels. Another quick trick for the people who are like, I'm on a corporate travel system like Concur, there's a little thing called manual entry. If you wanna get approved, book your own, use manual entry, that way you don't have to deal with that. Asking nicely, of course, goes a long way. Sometimes if you don't even have status, you're just nice to the person at the check-in. And you don't ask, you're just like, hey, you know, I'm here, I know it's low occupancy, there's probably not many people here. Sometimes they'll give you upgrades, but don't demand it, you know, always be a little bit sweet. Read all your emails, there's promotions coming out all the time from Hilton. Uh, from Hilton. The trick is you have to sign up with your email to get these. So National does one, two, free. Marriott, or Bonvoy, brings things out that uh, you just have to sign up for and you'll triple your points, some kind of promotions, but always watch your emails for that. And one uh, item on travel, the final bill for travel is what matters. A lot of people try to drill down and try to keep everything cheap. My thing is with businesses and my past life contracting, you can you uh, leverage, you could spend more money in one if you save money on another. You don't have to try to keep everything cheap. I fly a little bit nicer because I get such a great deal on rental cars and hotels. But at the end of the day, your customers or clients are gonna see the final number. They're not gonna get mad if you fly first class and you stay in a hotel cheap, whereas you stay three star all the way, it'll be the same price. Understand that and know that there's a human at the end. Last thing, consultants, everything matters. Every dollar matters. Sorry, this isn't for you. Full-time contractors, we're professionals. We do a lot of work and we're usually paid pretty well for it. Don't forget that. Expect companies to treat you well when you travel. Understand your travel policy. Don't listen to your director, manager. Actually go to HR, read it, understand it. 
Um, you're supposed to use your travel budget. That's another note. Um, there's always a human to approve everything. Utilize it, have a nice dinner, check out wherever you are, go to a city, country, learn how to piggyback. It's easy to be in a cool place and ask someone, ask your manager, ask your director, hey, I wanna stay an extra day, I'll pay the hotel, I'll pay whatever, stay the weekend, fly to the next destination for work. And basically, try to enjoy the road. I know everyone had one point when you traveled for business the first time, you got kind of a cool feeling. It's like, oh my God, I'm traveling for work. This is the greatest thing ever. And now we're probably a little bit more cynical on it. Remember how you felt when you traveled for the first time. And that concludes uh, my presentation. Uh.